Hello, I'm Shane in Sweden, and this is my series of videos on how to build an intrusion detection system in C-sharp. In the last video, we looked at how to build a rule that would allow our sensors to detect a host scan or a host sweep. And in this video, we're going to look at rules that can allow our sensors to detect another type of attack. Also, an attack used in the reconnaissance phase called port scan. A port scan generally is when the attacker has identified hosts that are accessible in the target network. And then it establishes connections to those hosts over a range of ports to see which ports are contactable using, for example, Telnet. And the reason it wants to map out which ports are accessible is that ports are often connected to services. So for example, if port 80 is available, that might indicate that there's a web server, a web service available on that server. And so by mapping out which ports we get a response from, we can start to try to detect which sort of applications and services are running on our target host. And then we can investigate these further for vulnerabilities. Now, as we did in the last video, we need to generate some test data. And we're going to go back to our A security site here, where we've got actually a capture file, which contains data demonstrating a port scan using the tool Nmap. So if we go into our solution, in our sensor tests, we're going to create a new test. And here we will be creating a port scan. Sensor with port scan packets. And obviously we want to see as a result a port scan alert created. We can pretty much use the most of the tests we created in the last video, but we might want to create different data. So we will create port scan network data for test. This method we will have to build. As we said before, we actually have this nmap scan data. So without further ado, we can look at that in Wireshark. So here we've downloaded from the security website, this nmap scan data. And we can see here, for example, that we have a host 192.168.100.103, which is contacting another host 192.168.100.102. And in the first network traffic packet here, we can see that the, the source destination port is 59660 and the destination port is 25. Then it's starting to look at Lots of other ports, all on the same destination target. It's trying to connect here and see if there's any response on any of these ports. So as we did in the last video, we're going to copy and export the status in Hexstream. And then I'm going to use the utility I showed you in the last video to create C sharp methods for packaging this uh, binary data. So here we have our method for creating our port scan data, which should be fairly familiar if you looked at the last video. And here we're creating 10 packets, which contain our first 10 port scan packet captures here. So we have our data and we can create our capture device. The scan here will be different. We want to have a different rule for our scanner, obviously. Here we'll have a port scan rule. Now, we need to think about which parameters we'd want to be sending into our port scan. Well, one obvious thing might be the threshold. How many different ports do we see contacted from the same source to the same destination before we declare it to be a port scan? So we might want to have a threshold and we might want to have certain ports which we include that are we consider to be very important. For example, if we see it contacting both port 80 and port 25 and port 23, all of which are commonly used ports for services that could be quite suspicious. Why would a, a client want to be contacting both services and web services at the same time? Or we could specifically just protect, just look at all the ports that we have open on our host. There are a number of varieties, number of possible variations. In this case, I think we'll 
want as a input parameter to our rule. We're collecting data from any, any source. We might want to define which hosts we want to protect. So we could have a destination, a target we're protecting in this case, this, this machine. And then we can say, well, if we see more than eight ports, we can set some sort of threshold. Then we define this as a port scan. So we're going to have a destination, the host we're trying to protect. So let's create a string um, protected host IP address, which in our case is 196.168. One hundred, one hundred and two. Uh, and the, we need to find the threshold level, i.e. the number of ports that are contacted before we recognize this as a port scan. So we said we're going to set that as eight, eight. And then we're going to pass this port scan rule to our sensor so that it can start looking out for port scan attack. Now here we need to create a new port scan rule. So let's just add a new, well, now we're starting to collect lots of rules. So just to keep things nice and clean, let's add a new folder here, which contains our rules. We can move our post scan rule in there. And our symbol rule. And now we're gonna add a new rule. It should be a port scan. Rule. And as before, I think this rule would probably be a IP root type of rule like we had last time. So we can just inherit from I IP root rule. And so we need to implement the missing members here. And I think we want to save ports scans we've seen, the ports contact we've seen so far, so we can do that using more or less a similar architecture to what we had before. And here we can rename this to a threshold. Threat threshold. And when we create our port scan, we include our destination address that we're protecting. And the, the threshold. Set our threat threshold to that. Okay, so when we get it packward, we'll do something with it, but actually we're, as before, we're going to do it with our simple rule first. And here we're just gonna return a match on packet source IP address and packet destination IP address. And we can copy similar logic from our host Now, we're only interested in protecting packets that are directed against our protected host. So we can just do a direct filter there. If the destination IP address is equal to protected host, then we'll do some things. Otherwise, we just don't care.
if it is the IP address for our protected host, then we want to check the port scene. Okay, so if port scene contains this port, and of course we don't have port information here, since we need almost all the full information, we'll just make this an I rule, which takes the full packet because we don't need the simple bit here. rather than changing the format of that. The reason I don't want to change it if I don't need to is because of the open-close principle. Really, we've got something else which uses this simple method. And once you've written code, it should really be closed for change but open for extension. Here we can use an I rule which has the full packets, so let's just work with that for the moment. So here we go checking if it's packet dot destination IP address and if the port scan contains packet dot destination port ports are an integer and we need to create that Create our class. Actually, we don't need a complex dictionary. We can just get away with a list event. So, if port scene contains destination port. If it doesn't contain the, the port, then we can add it. Sing add packet to destination port. And you can see this actually is a much simpler rule. All we have to check is if the port scene count is greater than or equal to our threat threshold, then it returns a match. Okay, so if we go back to our sensor test. We generate our protected hosts. So we add in our protected host address and the threshold. And since Capture Device is going to create 10 packets, we should expect to see 8, 9, and 10 should generate an alert. So the number of alerts here should be seen is 3. rename these. Okay, and now we can retest. And the test has failed. If we go down to see, look at the reason, we can see we should we expected three events and we actually got no events. So if we look at our test, see where the well actually I can see directly where it's wrong. Uh, we should have been protecting a host it was one nine two one six eight. 100, 102, and in fact, we said we want here we want to protect 196 to 168. So let's change that to the right address and run our test again. And there's all the screen. And as per usual, we want to run all the other tests as well to make sure everything's green. And all the tests are getting a screen result as well. So you can see that when we're looking at our design here, we're always trying to think about ways we can encapsulate our volatilities so that when we introduce new features or new changes in the future, we don't actually have to change that much to implement new features. And this new type of sensor here is a very good example of this because we've employed, deployed 
totally new type of sensor, a port scan sensor instead of a host scan sensor. And as you can see, with the infrastructure we'd built up and the flexibility we'd already designed in the system, did not require much new coding to implement a whole new feature, which is a good sign. If it requires an awful lot of code to implement new features which are similar to something that you've seen before, then that's a sign that perhaps you need to refactor and take another look at your design. So we've implemented a port scan, another type of reconnaissance attack. And uh, I think we'll keep this one quite short. And in the next video, we may perhaps look at a totally different type of attack, perhaps a denial of service attack or something like that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. And as always, remember the um, source code is available in a link onto the video if you want to download the code and try running through this example yourself. Well, that's all for me today. Thank you very much.